Hi, my name is Ben Levy. I play double bass in the Boston Symphony Orchestra. I joined in 2003, and I took the position of third chair uh, in the orchestra in 2007. I started bass when I was nine years old, living in a small town called Johnstown, Pennsylvania. And at that time, there was only enough uh, money in the school budget to offer string instruments. And at that time, being a nine-year-old boy, I thought the bass was really cool and wanted to play it just because it was the biggest thing that was there. I played a lot of jazz and a lot of orchestra outside of school and I was able to take private lessons as well. Uh, when I was 10 years old, I moved to Colorado. But funny enough, the teacher that I had living in Colorado was originally from Malden, Massachusetts, and saw the Boston Symphony when he was a kid. So there was always this orientation to come back east. I went to New England Conservatory of Music right across the street and graduated from there, then went to Rice's uh, Shepherd School of Music uh, for my master's degree, um, where I prepared at that time to take my audition for the Boston Symphony. And I won the job here in April of 2003 and started playing in July of also 2003. And the rest is history. So the double bass, even though it's a big instrument, you still do have to take good care of it and you have to upkeep and maintain it uh, as well as the bow. This is the bow and um, you need to make sure that you're always getting it rehaired, the hair that you use on it um, to play um, about every six months depending on how much you play. It's very important. Also, what I do after every single time Every, after every single time I play, I wipe down and sort of polish and clean off the wood of the instrument because you want to always make sure that you have rosin that you're using. And you use the rosin to sort of create some purchase and uh, grab and friction on the bow so that you can have control and grip the string. But what that does is create some dust. So um, always cleaning the bass off, cleaning the strings off. And the strings you also want to change about once a year, um, ideally. Um, other things you really want to be careful of are inside the bass, there's a sound post. And especially here in New England, we have very dry you know, winters and very humid, wet summers. And of course, the instrument being wood, it expands and contracts with those different humidity levels. So the sound post that's inside can get really, really tight and actually damage the instrument, or at the very least, not allow it to play as well as it could. So you wanna make sure at whatever level that you're at, that you're going to uh, a luthier or a repair person and having them adjust your sound post to make sure that the instrument is safe and that you're getting the best sound that you can out of it. So there aren't many pieces of the bass that you would be taking off and on like you would you know, with a clarinet or a trombone or another instrument, but there's still lots of pieces. There's of course the body of the instrument and there's this board where you put your fingers, and so we call that the fingerboard. And we have all of our strings, which used to be made out of cat gut, but we don't do that anymore. We made them make them out of steel and nylon, I believe. And uh, up here are the gears that you use to turn, sort of the machines to tune the instrument. And then as we get lower, we have this structure called the bridge. And actually these little knobs here are called bridge adjusters, which allow the bridge to go up and down to account for um, tension changes. And then this piece on the bottom is called the tailpiece. 
and you have an end pin that you can make taller or shorter, sort of on the, on the bottom. It's a nice spike. And um, this, of course, is the bow. And you tighten it and loosen it um, before and after you play. And a lot of bass players also use a stool, sit on a stool um, for stability, for comfort. Um, some bass players also stand. I like to advocate doing everything because it's good to have variety in your posture. And another thing that if you're an aspiring bass player, I highly recommend is getting a wheel to be able to transport your instrument around instead of having to sling it on your shoulder. The wheel goes in place of the tailpiece, or the, I'm sorry, the end pin, and it's a nice little wheel that takes the weight off of you so you can wheel around town. Because uh, the last thing you want to do is get to a gig and be physically exhausted from carrying your bass. As far as practicing the bass, or really any instrument, the first thing I would recommend, of course, is tuning your instrument. And you can do that many ways these days. I actually have a great tuning app on my phone. Um, these apps are great and very inexpensive, so there's no excuse not to tune your instrument. And then always make sure that you're warming up with either long tones, which means just just playing long, easy tones, or very simple scales without, without having to shift. Something like, uh, like this. and then back down. Very, very simple. For a beginner, set yourself up with realistic goals. Don't say to yourself, I'm gonna practice three hours today, I'm gonna nail this piece, I'm gonna perfect it. Set yourself manageable goals. Say I'm gonna practice for 45 minutes, 15 minutes I'm gonna do scales, another 15 minutes I'm going to do arpeggios, and then another 15 minutes, I'm going to play my solo piece, right? And then build on that. Don't, don't set yourself up to not meet your expectations. Um, the other thing that you should absolutely have every single time you're in your practice room is a metronome. Um, you can also get a metronome app. So it just gives you a click for you to play along with and that will start to develop your internal sense of rhythm and pulse. What I would also really recommend is that, especially for a bass player, is that you work to play in a relaxed way physically, that you don't slump and slouch over your bass because that'll constrict your airflow um, but that you practice in front of a mirror so that you can watch yourself and be nice and upright and relaxed. And always remember that tone is produced from producing weight, the weight of your body, rather than pressing, pressing into the bass. You're drawing the, the sound out of the instrument. When it comes to playing with other musicians, be it in an ensemble of 100 people or an ensemble of three people, the most important thing is to know your part before the rehearsal starts. Realizing that rehearsal is not the time for you to learn or practice your part. It's a time for you to be able to practice joining that part that you've already prepared with the rest of your colleagues. So that's very important. So that takes personal practice ahead of time. The other thing is your attitude. Um, 
always coming in, listening to other people, not just musically, but listening to what they're saying, making sure that when you sit down that people around you have enough room, that they can, if for bass players, you know, if you're sitting up high, there might be people behind you that need to be able to see the conductor. Just basic consideration of things. Think about how you would want to be treated and uh, act accordingly. Um, the other thing is when you come to a rehearsal, don't assume that somebody else is going to have a pencil. Bring your own. I usually bring a couple um, just to give to those people that might not have one. Make sure you have your rosin. Make sure you have your music, obviously. And make sure you have your bow. That's a very important one. I, when I was a kid, I showed up to a rehearsal without a bow. I ended up plucking the entire rehearsal and I got a big blister afterwards. So I learned my lesson from that one. Um, when it comes to playing in the ensembles, listen to those around you more than you're listening to yourself. Be aware be making eye contact with your colleagues, with the conductor, and that goes a tremendously long way. Um, but most of all, preparation and knowing your music is the simplest, surefire way to be a good and respectful colleague and to really contribute the most that you can in a rehearsal. This is a little bit of the Gig from the third suite, uh, the third cello suite by Johann Sebastian Bach. It's uh, originally written for cello, but bass players like to play them because they're very good uh, pieces musically and they're very technically challenging and they're very fun to play and listen to. And um, the next piece that I'm going to do is actually an interesting history as pertains to the Boston Symphony because it was written by the Boston Symphony's old music director, Serge Kuzovitsky, uh, who was also a very accomplished bass player. So this is just a little bit of the opening of his concerto for double bass. And it's very different than the Bach. It's much more lyrical and much more singing and um, more sad. Thank mm -hmm. you. 